A very good evening to our viewers. Thank you for joining us uh, this Monday on the Evening Review. My name is Dewan Jabela, your host for tonight. We are tonight uh, on the platform joined by Simvola Mudaveti. He is uh, a, an activist, perhaps a social justice activist. And uh, today, again, there has been some public uh, remarks that he has made and the State House has responded to those and we just wanted to engage him on those remarks. Thank you, Il, for always making time when we invite you here. In your latest um, public pronouncement, you criticized mm. the pronouncement by President Mbumba, who basically said, because of drought, people in the northern parts of the country may get a bit of leniency mm. when importing Mahangu and uh, the and related food stuff from Angola, and you are arguing that this amnesty seems to be only designed and confined to that part of the country, yeah. which you find discriminatory. If you can expand on what you meant, yeah, no, thank you, Toivo. Uh, I think what what I meant first of all is that uh, the drought is affecting the whole of Namibia, yeah, and uh, there are uh, regions like the Zambezi region, the Kavango region, the Konene region. Uh, and northern regions that yeah. share borders with countries like Angola, Botswana, and Zambia. Mm. And so when the president made the public pronouncement urging law enforcement officers to be lenient, um, for me, my worry was, um, why is it not um, you know, applicable to every part of this country? Mm. I mean, for a very long time, uh, the Zambezi region residents would have bought uh, maize meal at a cheaper price from Zambia, mm. uh, sweet potatoes, you know, uh, but we have very serious restrictions there. And so we were urging the president that he needs to do a national assessment yeah. for the whole country. Mm. And uh, secondly, these pronouncements, you know, uh, should run through processes that this country has. Mm. You know, there is a minister of safety and security, mm. um, there's a minister of finance, uh, NAMRA is involved. So. When a pronouncement is made by a president, yeah. uh, the, th the next day you have people importing mahangu, and then uh, what mandate will the police have, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in implementing uh, such leniency? So uh, my open letter to the president was to request him to say, let every Namibian mm -hmm. um, who's affected uh, benefit and it should be done uh, through the processes. Mm -hmm. If it's not done through these processes, then what you'll have is that one section of the country would be benefiting yeah. uh, while the rest of the country will not be benefiting. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yes. Give me a, a sense, uh, Simvula, of uh, the, the movement of goods between Namibia and Zambia in Zambezi because around Katima Molilo and perhaps other areas <coughs> because <coughs> in the north where I come from uh, we literally have relatives living on the other side of the of the fence and we graze sometimes you drive your animal on the other side of Angola for better grazing that day and then you drive back your animals at sunset yeah. and stuff like that like a, a very a really communal yeah. border there. How does the situation look like there? Yeah, you see, uh, we have relatives in yeah. Zambia, yeah. Um, in Botswana, uh, because you know that these uh, artificial boundaries yeah. that were put up by colonial masters, colonial masters did not consider, you know, the, the ethnic groups that lived in those areas. So. Mm. We are related to them, similar to what happens in the north. The difference, however, is that whereas in the north you are allowed to graze, you know, for, for such um, uh, kilos as permitted by standing agreements mm -hmm. between Namibia and Angola, yeah. we don't have that agreement in uh -huh. the Zambezi. Uh -huh. Whereas in the north, um, you know, uh, these kinship uh, relations yeah. are actually regulated by government structures. Mm -hmm. uh, MOUs are signed. And uh, from time to time, you hear public pronouncements yeah. uh, that show that the relationship between Namibians living in the north and Angola are one. Uh, but you hardly hear that yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in the Zambezi. And, and for me, why it is a bone of contention, Zambia 
went out of its way to help Namibia get yeah. liberated. Yeah. Similar to what Angola did. Mm. Uh, but uh, if you go to Congola, a police checkpoint, which I called ruthless in the article, yes, yes. Uh, it has become a de facto veterinary line. Yeah, yeah. That uh, even mangoes that you have from the Zambezi region yeah. are confiscated every year. Yeah. Even sour milk that does not carry foot and mouth disease mm. that passes at Oshivelo mm. is, is confiscated. Um, so I, I think um, the, the relationship that we have should be uh, regulated by, by government. Yeah, yeah. Government needs to uh, open these channels in the Zambezi region mm -hmm. uh, in a similar fashion in which they've opened the channels uh, with Angola. Mm. Of course, with Botswana, it's a different issue. Uh, but uh, in terms of prices of maize meal, for yeah. a very long time, Zambia has produced bumper harvests. Mm. And the price of maize meal was very cheap and affordable. But we, we don't see a, a, a government um, coming to our aid and saying, look, uh, these people would have uh, fared very well in yeah. terms of food production had they be, you know, this 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 type of traffic allowed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what we are calling for. <coughs> you made a <coughs> that uh, that aspect of the of the mangoes yeah. and the sour milk. Yeah. You cited those examples in your yeah. in your opinion, opinion, on your open letter, mm. and um, I thought that was a huge contrast, really. Yeah. Because. If I'm coming from Okalongo home mm. to Vinduk, the only thing that I shouldn't carry really yeah. is meat, yeah. uh, which I find draconian also, yeah. especially if I'm just bringing meat for my children to eat yeah. in Vinduk. But um, that is the law. But I've never seen any other restrictions. If, uh, of course, mangoes in Zambezi are produced on a much higher scale, yeah. but we do have also isolated uh, plantations of, the, of those in our homesteads in the yeah. north, yeah. and there's never been any restrictions. Milk, I've never heard of anyone's yeah. milk being thrown away. Yeah, and, and you see, that's the painful part, uh, that three years ago, yeah. we saw the Ministry of Agriculture yeah. uh, informing um, northerners that sour milk should, should be passing through Shivelo, and we were shocked. I, I called them and said, oh, we thought sour milk carries <laughs> foot and mouth disease. They said, no, 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 it doesn't. Yeah. And so we literally had to write on social media informing our people that, please, residents of the Zambezi region, yeah. you are allowed to carry your sour milk. If anyone molests you, inform us. Mm -hmm. and, and, and people were shocked. Yeah, yeah. People were calling and saying, is this true? Because thousands of liters, my brother, was always sour milk was confiscated at Muruban, thrown away, not even for commercial use, for consumption. Mm. And, and so even the mango issues, you know, we, we have, I think, the largest production of mangoes in the whole country. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I came in January with 250 kgs, and the police officer asks me, where did you get this? And I said to him, how is that your business? Yeah. You know, should I take a police officer to my house and show him? You know, so, um, and, and I think for us, this is why we are saying it's an issue of inequality. Yeah, yeah. It's an issue of uh, government perpetuating structural poverty mm -hmm. against residents of mm -hmm. the Zambezi region. Mm -hmm. Do you know that uh, when you come from the north in public transport or private transport, they don't stop you at Toshivelo to come out and produce your ID. But yes. at Congola, all cars that pass Congola People are subjected to produce their national identity documents to prove they are Namibian. Uh -huh. And the argument has been uh, Zambezi region borders with foreign countries, but that's a lousy argument. Yeah. Kavango has a border with Angola. The Konene. So um, for me, when you see these measures perpetuated against your people, yeah. it is very clear uh, that there is selective morality. Mm -hmm. and, and, and we are going to continue speaking against these vices. It is unfortunate that Hungary is insensitive. Yes. Uh, it does not know what happens on the ground and, and you know, responds for the sake of uh, securing his job. And <coughs> that is what I wanted to address you on because uh, <coughs> uh, Dr. Hengari, of course, the presidential spokesperson, replied to your letter. Yeah. And uh, he said some really... Yeah. Uh, I don't know my own assessment. It's terrible things. He said, yeah. for example, he are, he's accusing you of tribalism. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, saying that uh, 
the president has a history of uh, of inclusive leadership and whatever. Yeah. But, but you you were raising a specific yeah. point. Yeah. You are not questioning his uh, liberation credentials yeah, no. or anything anything of the sort. Yeah. But Dr. Engari says you're a tribalist. What, yeah. do, what do you say to that? Yeah, I think uh, Engari is insensitive to uh, the cries of Namibians. Yeah. You know, 2020 November, when the Namibian Lives Matter movement was formed, yeah. and we informed the State House that we were going to hold a public, I mean, in fact, public demonstrations in the yeah. whole country yeah. to register our displeasure on how government was handling the, the acts of aggression by BDF. Mm. The same Hengari uh, called us pointless. Yeah, yeah. And here he is again. <coughs> we are raising an issue of national importance yeah. and saying, Mr. President, we are also your children. And Hengari says, uh, you know, I'm a tribalist. So I, I think there is need that um, Hengari and others in this country need to be educated on how processes of this country work. Yeah. And we are waiting for the president, if he does not assist residents of the Zambezi to access food from Zambia, I think Namibians have the democratic right to register their displeasure in other means uh, that can respond to the president. Right. Uh, and I think Hengari is also seeking relevance with the new president. He did that with the previous president. Today, as we speak, the Namibian Defense Force are deployed along the borders because of the public demonstrations that we were, you mm. know. So we are not going to stop because of what Hengari has said. Uh, he's doing it to respond to uh, his job. But also I think he's intellectually lazy. Yeah, he should have applied his mind to the issue. The issue is please allow others in the country yeah. to access food from neighboring countries. Yeah, yeah. The same way have allowed northerners. That mm. was our point. Mm, mm, yeah. mm. So before you go for a break, essentially what you are saying, because you see what, what, what I found also strange a little bit about the pronouncement of President Bumba around allowing food uh, importation in Namibia on a linear basis is that, he, you know, it was just... I generally have a problem with, I think it's a very good statement. Mm. But it was just randomly made. Yeah. It was not a prepared speech. It's, it's not something that he, you could tell it's not something that was prepared yeah. in advance to go and say. Yeah. I think he was just responding to a concern there. Yes. <clears throat> and then it, of course, at that level, the pronouncement of the president usually becomes sort of public policy. Yes. And we saw the Minister of uh, Agriculture yeah. quickly announcing some measures yeah. immediately, uh, meaning that the whole thing has been formalized, yeah. but only yeah. confined to the, the region's concern. Because, yeah. of course, people in those regions raised their yeah. concern as a community. Yeah. They, they, they couldn't have spoken for other regions, perhaps. Yeah. They, they looked at themselves first. But once that becomes public policy, yeah. then you thought it should have then spread yeah. To the rest of the country. Yeah. Um, how is the drought situation in your region? Man, the drought situation in Zambezi is, is, is worse, to be honest with you. I don't want to compare Zambezi to the north, but uh, you see, the staple food in the Zambezi is maize, and in the north, it's mahango. Yes. Now, maize is not as drought resistant as mahango. Yeah. So, the effects of El Nino in the Zambezi region are worse on the maize production. So what that means is that uh, the, the, the level at which people get affected in accessing this basic commodity is higher mm. than in the north and every part of the country. And so my understanding is that uh, what should determine uh, government's response yeah. to the drought is level in terms of how severe it is in the part of, of the... Uh, so, so it is severe in the region. Mm. Um, and not just that. You see, grazing is also another big issue. Yeah. Uh, unlike other parts of uh, Namibia that have markets, mm. you know, we don't have a market to sell our cattle. Mm. Uh, and so the conditions are, are very dear. Of course, we appreciate the fact that government declared a state of emergency. Yeah. But that doesn't take away uh, the fact that there are better ways and means in which people can still survive outside what government gives to them. Mm. Yes. Absolutely. We go for a very brief break and then I'll return with us in Wuna Mudabaji.
the Ministry of Environment, Forestry and Tourism in collaboration with the Namibia Tourism Board and the Ondonga Traditional Authority will be hosting the Itotha Carnival at the Kangonde Salt Pan in the Oshikoto region from 27 June to 1st July 2024. Expect a fun-filled weekend including traditional dishes, cookout competitions, totem parades, traditional games, horse riding, skydiving and quad biking. Accommodation facilities will be available at cost. The Itotha Carnival, celebrating our ancient heritage. Our conversation with uh, Singular Modality continues. Now, <clears throat> moving away from uh, the, the subject at hand, yeah. I think we are pretty exhausted it now. The <clears throat> Do you think also as, a, as an academic, that, that is also part of who you are, yeah. that the people in your region are also starting to see some of the things that you've mentioned, mm -hmm. because I, I look at the election results from 2019 and 2020, yeah. where even independent candidates mm -hmm. have won constituencies beating ruling party candidates and whatnot. Do you think that could be also in part a, a culmination of uh, how the residents feel they are treated by the central government? Yeah, it could be. Of course, a number of factors will, you know, uh, filter in as to why people decide to vote. Uh, but one thing is clear, uh, that when uh, the government of the day does not respond to the needs of the people, especially in one part of the country, mm. uh, then people start to register their displeasure through the ballot. Um, and I think it is one thing that government should take very serious, mm. that when people raise their concerns, public concerns of safety, of, of, of food, that they should be listened to firstly. Yeah. And secondly, that uh, we should not be responding for the sake of showing that we've responded. Mm. I think beyond uh, writing uh, articles, uh, the people are hungry, yeah. they need food, and they have managed to sustain, you know, their families. Mm. Uh, and all they need is, is government support. So um, the, the voting patterns will continue changing yeah. uh, because the generation uh, is starting to see that beyond the liberation credentials, it's important we recognize that uh, our forefathers were the second largest tribe mm. in exile. It's, it's not an ethnic issue. Yeah. It is a numeric statement I'm making. Yes. They were the second largest tribe in terms of those who died in exile. And so they fought to have us, their children, benefit from the fruits of independence. And when the fruit is not trickling down to us, mm. and, and you can see a particular pattern, um, you know, so that, that makes voters change their preferences. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think that uh, this constant flirtation mm. with the idea of an independent mm. Caprivi. Mm. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, we, we saw a poll that was held recently, mm. people wanting back their, their Caprivi name instead yeah. of Zambezi. But that is a separate issue. The key yeah. issue here is this constant voices of dissent. People yeah. saying, we are not Namibians, we are, we are Caprivians. We need a referendum, yeah. of course, following also the unfortunate events of the late 90s. Yeah. Do, do you think that um, that can also affect how a people can be perceived by a government that is in a situation like that? Yeah, I, I think, you know, uh, in, in the area of politics, um, in the ruling party, for example, yeah. they have been uh, enemies. People have been called enemies, yeah. you know, from exile. Uh, you know, the the, the likes of Idipo Hamtenya left. Um, you know, RDP, COD. But you don't see the state perpetuating revenge against these people who came out of the ruling party. 
But when it comes to the Zambezi region, you see that happening. Mm. Yeah, so I think it's a necklace that uh, people have put on us, that every time you want to stand up and speak, then they give you a name. Yeah. Uh, but how long will that be? We, our parents, fought for the liberation of this country. We are Namibians. And when we speak out and say, look, uh, this Namibian house you are building, why are you excluding us? Then you are called names. Mm. So literally, I think it's government that is perpetuating that agenda, not us. Uh, we stand as Namibians who are in the Zambezi region. By the way, even the call of saying uh, there were people who want the region to be called Caprivi. Mm. I was part of that deliberation. There were very few people. There were very few people uh, who were calling for that. But it made headlines. Mm. You know. So I, I think uh, the problem with government now is that the whip they've been using, that every time we stand up and speak, uh, they put you the necklace of, you no, know, here they come, they want to be a, a country, is no more working. Mm. And uh, that is why we are saying it will not work. Mm. That issue will not work. We are part of this country. We have contributed to the liberation of this country. And we are bona fide Namibians. We reserve the right to be heard. We reserve the right also to participate in the national heritage of this country. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you... <clears throat> of course, you are, you, are, you are also leading the, the, Zambezi, <clears throat> the Zambezi Lives Matter, <clears throat> Matter movement which <clears throat> was at the forefront of uh, yeah. seeking answers when the Inchindo brothers were mm. killed, I think, 2020? Yeah, 2020. 2020. Yeah. And that also did not uh, paint a very glossy picture yeah. of you in the eyes of the authorities. Yeah. Uh, that's why you were referring to how you were called, that you were... Um, what was it? A pointless, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was a pointless yeah. uh, whole thing. Yeah. You know, four people died, yeah. brutally killed in the manner that they were. Yeah. Um, do you, do you, uh, so the movement itself, uh, is it still existing? Are we? Yeah, the movement is well and kicking. Yeah. You know, I, I'm happy to inform you in the Namibian nation that our genuine calls were heard by parliament. In fact, Parliament adopted a report yeah. last year with the recommendations that we made. Uh, chief among is that we wanted government to open a consulate office in Kasani. And Parliament agreed to that. Mm. And so we are in the process of going to the president that he activates that implementation because uh, the legislative arm of our government has oversight functions over the executive. Mm. Uh, so I'm happy that uh, our calls were genuine calls for protection. We have had soldiers deployed. We've not had any other killing after that mm -hmm. of Botswana Defense Force. So I, I think um, I'm, I'm happy and pleased to note that we use the democratic processes to register our displeasure and government has, has finally had what is only remaining is the border treaty of 2018. Yeah. because Namibia has not yet deposited the instruments of that treaty. So we are asking government to come out clearly and say, um, are they going to deposit? And if they deposit against the wishes of the four traditional authorities in the Zambezi region, who are the custodians of land rights, communal land rights, then it means government has disregarded the wishes and the will of the people. Yeah. Unless they produce minutes that will show us, because the traditional authorities have said, can you show us? the minutes of meetings mm. where you consulted us and we gave consent to our ancestral land. Mm -hmm. Yes. You, you, uh, is the movement going to, especially in 2024, a very important year, yeah. are you going to remain a, a pressure group? Are you going to, are you considering entering the political terrain? Uh, I think for now we will remain a social justice movement. Uh, we will continue calling on the rights of uh, Namibians who reside in the Zambezi region, particularly along the uh, Namibia-Botswana border. Yeah. Uh, but if time comes that uh, our concerns are not being listened to through the method that we are using, yeah. I think the membership and leadership will need to meet and discuss uh, the way forward. But for now, mm -hmm. we shall continue agitating for the rights of Namibians who reside in that part of the country. Yeah. Yes. Maybe in closing, uh, Simvola, the 
we have elections coming up um all political leaders that are mm. vying for president in particular mm. are putting out their ideas mm. I, i'm just wondering if you were speaking to to the netumba it was mm. the tulas of this mm. world right now and saying look because there seem to be genuine concerns in mm. zambezi yes. things that are that you can just are not very general to the country there yeah. are specific zambezi issues that yeah. uh, that ought to be you, you just spoke about the the 2018 border, yeah, border, treaty. border treaty which has angered a lot of people yeah. in in the region yeah. saying a lot of land a lot of jurisdictions have been sort yeah. of handed over to botswana yeah. namibians living at some in some villages yeah. are now being told that you are now on the yeah. other side yeah. if you were speaking to those candidates what would you say to them today yeah i think uh, first of all um they need to address these concerns because they are genuine you know the zambezi region like uh, we would always say uh, the former kapriri strip um, when it was uh, you know formed um, had international implications you know so when you um, keep cutting away land from the zambezi region you give it to botswana you give it to kavango region you are destabilizing the region so i think there is need that uh, whatever political formation is uh, vying for presidency they should come up with a program that shows that what are they going to do for that region mm-hmm. uh, that spells economic growth inclusivity and integration uh, we need to be integrated uh, in the zambezi region it is the only region in the country where you even struggle to buy a gun mm-hmm. you want to buy a firearm you know shotgun they ask you to produce a card to show you have cattle yet we have the lowest rate of using our firearms on mm. human beings mm. so we need to hear from them what are they going to do to avoid this inequality that has been perpetuated for long mm. and finally also i think to recognize uh, that um, our concerns are not just genuine they are concerns that build the nation you know and and when they are considered I think Namibia would be a better place. Mm. But if 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 the rhetoric continues of just saying um you know when we ask for 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 a voice mm. and people do not hear our voice uh, I think these issues will continue and one day um I think uh, the the young people might decide to do whatever they do mm. to register their dis- displeasure. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you Simbola for coming through again. Thank you Toyo. So it's a me. pleasure talking to you. Thank you. That is uh, Silvula Mudamedi, he is a uh, social justice activist who speaks mostly on concerns on issues that are of concern to the Zambezi region. Of course, I'm not confining you now to yeah, sure. to Zambezi only, yeah, sure. but of course uh, you've been very vocal on some of those issues in the region. Thank you for watching. Yeah.